Good afternoon. This is one of the rare hatless videos, but that's neither here nor there. Today we're going to show you how to replace the power jack on a Dell Inspiron 15. Um, one of the biggest mistakes people make when unplugging their laptop is instead of twisting and pulling, meaning to uh, kind of twist the plug out of the laptop like you would twist a Q-tip in one of these, um, they wiggle them back and forth. Yeah, so when you unplug your laptop, you really just want to kind of twist and pull. But what people end up doing is they wiggle and they yank. And as you can see, what that does is that breaks and puts a short in the power jack. Now, this can be a big problem or a minor problem. In this case, it's a minor problem because that power jack is not attached to the motherboard. It's a separate piece that can be replaced. And so, the first thing you want to do is remove all the screws take out your battery remove all your screws I've already done so after you remove your screws you want to pull out your CD-ROM drive and remove the two screws from there I will say apparently someone has been into this laptop prior to me getting to it because some screws were missing and for the first time ever the ribbon cable was attached to the CD-ROM was stuck it wasn't seated properly and actually has a crack I actually had to unplug the ribbon cable from underneath the keyboard to get the CD-ROM out. Let me give you a pro tip here. As you can see, I have screws laying here. And no, they are not at random. They are laid out in the same order in which they came out of the laptop. So these three screws came from here. This big screw came from here, across, and so on and so forth. The second set of screws, they came from underneath the keyboard. And you'll see they're in the same order in which they sat under the keyboard. The reason I do this, as you can see, is not all these screws are the same length, same gauge. And so by mapping them out, you know you're putting them exactly where they belong and you won't screw too deep or put too big of a hole in too big of a place. The easiest way to get your keyboard off is there's going to be clips in here. And what I use, I use what I call a spoon, but this is nothing more than a tablet tool. You can find these on eBay to replace screens on tablets and cell phones. I use them for everything. But anyhow, there are little clips in here. You just simply pull and pop. You work your way down slowly. Sometimes it helps to, while you're popping with this, to have another screwdriver. And you simply pull, pop, unplug your ribbon cable, and then this is where the ribbon cable for the CD-ROM actually feeds into this. So this actually comes across here plugged in the CD-ROM. Like I said, the CD-ROM was stuck. This wasn't seated properly. I had to unplug the ribbon, thus pulling this out with the CD-ROM. Anyhow, once you got all the screws out, gently close your lid, flip it over, and then take your spoon. I really do not suggest a screwdriver um, if you've got to use something plastic. But these are the best things to use. You just pop Go through, pop, pop, and you'll gently pop this out as you go around. Just wiggle and pop. If it's stuck, just kind of wiggle it back and forth, and it will pop loose. And simply take your plate off, put it aside. And so this is the culprit. He's right here underneath this hinge. Tiny screw right here. Take out. Then we should be able to grab this wire here. No, it's kind of hard because I'm holding the camera because I didn't bring my tripod to work today because I wasn't planning on doing this. So anyhow, I'm just going to gently back him out. And there it is. So unfortunately, the way this wire wraps under here, we are going to have to take the logic board out the rest of the way. So we're going to take the wireless card off. Take that screw out, undo any ribbon cables, remove this screw. And it looks like there's really only one or two screws holding this in here. Another pro tip, if you're doing a motherboard replacement and there are three, four, five screws, but many different holes, what I'll do is I'll take a little Sharpie and I'll just put a little tip mark right by the screw so that when I put it back together, I know which hole is for the screws to hold the logic board in opposed to which hole is a pass-through hole for the bottom of the case. So 
see, I haven't taken any screws out. It looks like there's a screw missing, but what that is, when you put the bottom of the case on, the screw goes to the bottom of the case, it goes through there. So that's why it helps to put a little pin mark next to the screws that actually hold the motherboard in so you don't get them confused. However, in the case of this model, it looks like there's only that screw and this screw, so I'm not going to take the time to do the Sharpie. I'm just going to take these screws out and pull the logic board out, replace my plug, and put it back together. Because this isn't one of the situations where it's going to take me a day or two to get the part in because I already ordered it. Because what happens is when you have to take something apart and troubleshoot it, and then order the part, and it takes a few days, that's when you start to forget where screws went. And so that's where it comes in handy to make those marks. Okay, check this out. So underneath the Wi-Fi, there's actually a plastic clamp here. So there's another screw there. Now this shouldn't be too hard, because once again, I'm doing this all one-handed, and I've never been inside this model laptop. So it's not like I have the procedure memorized. So we took out our plastic clip, we took out our Wi-Fi card, two screws. And now, we do have our hard drive ribbon cable there. Make sure you unplug the speaker. And you can actually see where it actually came loose. The only thing holding it in place is a piece of tape. So we pull that tape off. So the only thing that was actually holding it to the motherboard is this piece of vinyl tape. So now I got that out. So now, just want to compare the two before I go through the hassle of putting them in. You can see the screw mounting loop broke on that one, whereas the replacement still has it. This does have a built-in resistor to prevent or minimize back feed. It is a little shorter, but I don't think it'll be a problem. And so now, to replace it. Now I have done enough of these that I am pretty familiar with the way these sort of plugs plug in. And so instead of unplugging the VGA cable and the ribbon cable and removing the motherboard completely so I can flip it over, I just simply leaned it up, plugged it in, make sure that it's well seated, and then I will reroute it. Now in order to do this quickly, and so I could use both hands, all I did while the camera was off is I reversed the process. Put my plastic clip back in, I put my screw back in, I put my Wi-Fi card back in, put the screw back in. Now if you look here, there's a black arrow and a white arrow. That is where the color coordinated wires go. So your primary wire goes here, your secondary wire goes there. Interestingly enough, if you've never seen the inside of a laptop, all these wires do is they trace down here and they go to the top of the screen of your laptop so that when your laptop is flipped over and the lid is open those antennas are at the highest point so these literally are just wires that run to the top of your monitor to get the highest point to get the best signal range okay so this is screwed back in place these are the monitor hinges okay so we got our Wi-Fi card put back in let's plug our speakers back in you want to make sure you do this before you put everything back together 14 years ago when I first started doing this, there was a few laptops that I did put back together that I'd take back apart because I forgot to plug in a speaker or something of the like. So, oh, look at that, RAM's not even in all the way because I was talking and working at the same time. So I've got my RAM seated in, RAM seated in, ribbon cable, some wireless wires, CPU fans plugged in, Speakers are plugged in, hard drive, motherboards, ribbon cables plugged in. So now at this point you just repeat, reverse the process. So now let's test it out. No beeps, we got our splash screen, I want to go ahead and turn it off because I don't want to get to the point where the motherboard, the hard drive boots up. And so now we can reassemble once again. Not final assembly, we're just going to put the keyboard on, put the screws under here, put CD-ROM back in. Make sure the keyboard, make sure the mouse, Wi-Fi, and all that stuff works before we do final assembly. So I did my final check, keyboard, mouse, everything works, Wi-Fi works, 
Uh, computer's done. I went ahead and did my final assembly. Ironically, or interestingly enough, with the battery in, it shuts off. Uh, this is not an OEM battery. I think the customer bought a generic battery a while back. Um, one thing I know from all my years of experience is the laptop will not run with the battery in it. The battery's bad. Clearly, it's not the power brick because it's running without a battery. Clearly, it's not my brand new power port because, once again, it's running without the battery. Put the battery in, it boots up, turns on, light flashes amber, and then shuts off. But without the battery, it runs. So anyhow, that is the long format version of how to replace a broken battery charger on a Dell Inspiron 1500. Thank you so much. And thank you for checking out my videos. Go to the playlist to the right called Computer Repair. i got plenty more videos. And thank you for uh, spending your time with us. And if you want to support this channel, please go to patreon.com forward slash d410 or click on the link up in the corner. Thank you.